What's up, guys? This is Jesse here at Jewelers Advantage, and this is a segment we call AI for Jewelers. And jewelers have questions about AI. We're here to answer them and help you move into the future of an industry that's been around for a really long time, but is changing quite a bit. So let's get into it. This is Jewelers Advantage. A lot of you have questions about ChatGPT. I've seen in various groups out on the interwebs. Jewelers have questions about AI, and at this point, everybody has heard of ChatGPT. Now, if you are getting into ChatGPT for the first time, there's something that you're going to have to learn, which is called prompt engineering, which is a skill in and of itself. It's basically, how do I talk to AI? What this does is it makes it so that you don't have to learn that skill. This tool was built on the back of a lot of one-to-one -one consulting engagements in the jewelry industry. I won't give you my whole life story right now. Just know that there is a lot under the hood with this tool that also enables you to use AI for a jewelry business across all areas of the business, whether you're designing products, if you're doing marketing, sales, operations, or finance, you can do it with this tool and basically have bumper lanes in place that not only help you with AI by not really having to be good at prompting, but also having good quality advice that is taking into account all aspects of a jewelry business, which is very cool. So let's start by clicking on product. Most people that get into AI for jewelry first see the really cool images that people are coming up with. And we're here to answer the question of, well, how are you going to make the piece after you come up with a really cool AI jewelry design? We have to know what we're going to do with the design from a marketing standpoint, and then also a production standpoint and a finance standpoint and things of that nature. We also have to be thinking of these in terms of product. So if you can see on the screen now, we have various market segments and style segments of jewelry. You are probably either in some type of fine jewelry, which would be fine jewelry, designer jewelry, or high jewelry, maybe even bridal jewelry. Maybe you're a private jeweler just doing engagement rings. Maybe you're one of the hip hop guys. In which case, you'd really want to listen up because hip-hop guys are usually the biggest innovators for customs. So you, you got to be using AI if you're in hip-hop. Craft jewelry, that's more the beaded. Kind of handmade jewelry. Cultural jewelry could be anything from Indian wedding jewelry to something from East Asia with the dragons and jade. Or maybe silver and turquoise with Native Americans. And then finally, art jewelry. Something like Wallace Chan or Cindy Chow or something like that. So we don't want to just be making cool designs. We also want to be thinking about making great products and making a great business out of our passion for jewelry. So that's already what we're on target for here. So the question would be, what kind of product should we make if that's the goal? I've got a cheat sheet here that helps me figure that out. So I'm looking at my own prompts for this. If you stick around to the end, I'll make sure you get this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run a trend analysis. So I'm going to highlight this text here. Throw it into the chat bar. Clean that up a little bit. Not sure why that came through. I'm just going to remind it as I say, analyze current jewelry market trends to identify popular design elements, creative themes, and materials used. Include both reputable, reputable jewelry industry and fashion sources in your analysis in order to illustrate the cross-section of these two industries in relation to consumer trends. Now we run parallel to fashion, so we're going to want to be aware of what is in vogue. Literally, what is in vogue magazine? So let's also remember that this can search the internet. So I'm just going to add in search the web, just so it knows that that's exactly what I want to do. And I press enter, and now we're going to watch Jewelers Advantage search the internet. So as we can see, we're getting some trend analysis here. We've got popular design elements like bold pearls. We know that that's for real. Ear cuffs, mismatched earrings, big bangles, and gauntlets. I'd say that there's fair arguments to all of these being trends. Creative themes, of course, sustainability is a big deal. Marine inspiration, mermaid core is an evolving trend. I didn't know that. That's kind of interesting. And then immersive experiences. So... Brands are transforming traditional retail environments into immersive sensory experiences. For instance, Cartier's Time Unlimited Expedition and Bulgari's Serpenti Factory Initiative blend art and jewelry 
creating engaging narratives around their collections. Hmm, that's very interesting. What could we combine here? I'm thinking we would do the mermaid core thing because that's pretty cool. And we want to create an immersive experience of some kind, blending art and jewelry. So let's think of an artist. How about Takashi Murakami? How about we do hip hop? Let's do Takashi Murakami. If you've seen the flowers, he's the guy that is a famous Japanese pop artist. He's kind of like the Japanese Andy Warhol. That would be a good challenge for this. And then we're going to do mermaids. So let's think of this. Let's create jewelry products inspired by mermaid core. These should be large statement pieces. What would be some ideas for pendants? So here we're getting some cool ideas. We've got mermaid core ideas built around a coral reef, a mermaid tail, an ocean wave, shell pendants, seahorse pendants. So it's not just mermaid themed jewelry. This is like the type of jewelry somebody could wear if they're into mermaid core. So that's like a real customer. That's a real person that's going out and cosplaying, perhaps. Maybe they go to conventions, something like that, and they would want to buy jewelry for this. So you could build an entire collection around this that wouldn't only appeal to the mermaid core population, but then also you could tap into the psyche of a very passionate fan base with this. So we've got the mermaid tail pendant. I think that that's a cool idea. Let's also reference an art style. We were saying Takashi Murakami. So before we get started, describe the art style of Takashi Murakami. As we can see now, the AI is describing Takashi Murakami. If you're not familiar with Takashi Murakami, definitely look him up. He's awesome. And a huge, huge impact on pop culture and art. So here we're getting an analysis of Mr. Murakami's work. And we're getting it to describe the actual stylistic elements of this particular style. Maybe we would also say describe the style of Andy Warhol, since we were also talking about Andy Warhol. And here we go, just speeding this up for you. So we've got a full analysis of the work of Andy Warhol's work as well. Now, great artists reference great artists. So there's been a criticism of people saying that AI is theft because it's been trained on the art styles of all of these various artists. But any real artist knows that they're combining the styles of the people that they were influenced by. So we could also add in a third reference here and say, what is the art style of Pablo Picasso? And now we're getting an analysis of Pablo Picasso's work. So the reason that I'm doing this is I want to see what would happen if we made a mermaid core piece that was stylistically influenced by a combination of three great artists, one being Takashi Murakami, one being Andy Warhol, and the third being Pablo Picasso. What would that look like? That's an original idea. That's an original human idea that I'm now accelerating with AI. What we're actually exploring here is how AI can be used as a creative medium for the arts in general, and then we're going to apply it to jewelry and turn it into products that we can sell. So the third thing I'll ask, or the fourth thing I'll ask, is what would be the combination of these three artist styles? Do not mention the artist by name. What I want to do here is just create the technical aspects of what that art style would be. If you combine Takashi Murakami and Andy Warhol and Pablo Picasso into an art style, what would that even mean? What would that even be? So in that case, we're getting some pretty interesting things. We've got geometric abstraction and bold colors, probably because of Takashi Murakami's bold colors and the geometric abstraction of Pablo Picasso. We've got pop culture and mass production aesthetics. That's clearly coming from maybe a combination of Takashi Murakami and Andy Warhol. 
And then we've got mythical and natural elements. That could be a combination of all three. I'm not really sure. This is now at this point just taking what was discussed earlier in the thread and the AI really quickly created an artistic style and gave us design ideas. So we've got a geometric mermaid tail pendant, pop culture coral reef pendant, and a mythical sea dragon pendant. I would like to just keep it very much on a mermaid theme, so I'm going to now say create this product. Image. We have to be really literal with AI sometimes, but it responds to your words. It understands its world through words the same way we do, through language. So then very quickly, it's coming together with a product concept for the mermaid tail. This should be a kind of artistic, abstract, geometric piece. And that would certainly qualify. If we wanted to make edits to this, we could right here. We could click this and we have a little paintbrush tool and you can paint in anything that you'd want to change and then say what change to make. I think this is pretty cool for now. Maybe I would want to create another variation. And I'm saying create another variation more minimalist. Sometimes AI makes things that are really complex and we have to simplify them down. So by saying make it more minimalist, generally it starts steering the design towards something a little bit more feasible. Clearly we have some type of enamel work, maybe some mother of pearl inlay. You could add a bail to this piece. That'd be pretty cool. Let's try making a 3D sculpted version, less abstract, yellow gold only. You could just keep doing this over and over again. You could go create 20 designs in a row and then curate down to three. This one I really like. What a beautiful 3D mermaid tail pendant for our mermaid core customer that we know is a trend. I didn't know that was a trend until today, but here we go with creating a design that is a 3D sculpted pendant that is drawing from creative styles that would have been used by somebody like Picasso or Murakami or Andy Warhol. Very cool. So you can see that it actually looks nothing like those artists at this point. There's only slight connection to their creative vision, the same way a real artist would, where we would go out and get influenced by an artist and then go make something our own with our own ideas by directing the process in our own way. And that's exactly what's happened here. This is really nothing like those three artists work. This is now my statement. So in a way, this is an artistic medium. It's just a really accelerated art of the imagination. It's like an art of consciousness if you approach this the right way. So we have this cool 3D pendant. What are we going to do now? Well, the question would be, how are you going to make the piece? That's the big criticism in the market with AI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this prompt for custom project design and deposit and... I'm only going to take a portion of this. I want to just know the size that this is going to need to be and the production steps and things of that nature. So what I will do is I copy paste. Let's assume a size of 1.5 inches long. Create a cost estimate for materials, labor, and timetable of production. Include the roles required to manufacture the piece, including CAD and 3D printing. Write a list of production steps for project management to manufacture this piece, starting with a 3D depth map into CAD and 3D printing into standard jewelry production steps. Help me to establish a tentative retail price using the correct formula and include a cover letter requesting a deposit amount of, let's do 750. That includes key details and timelines of the project. And now we've got this starting to come up with the estimates. We're doing 18 karat gold in yellow, and it's approximately 15 grams. That's probably a fair estimate. Bear in mind that anything with gold price is only an estimate, and you have to check with your production manager or your CAD specialist or whoever you work with. You can't take this at its word for pricing. Just understand that this is an estimate meant to make things go faster for you. So we've got our list of materials that we could use. We have cost of labor, 
that seem pretty accurate so far. And then we have the roles required. We know we need a CAD designer. We need 3D printing. We need a goldsmith. We need an enamel artisan. Potentially, if we were going to go back to enamel, it remembers that from earlier in the thread. Of course, we need a polisher. And then we're going through the steps. So if you're new to customs, this is going to give you an idea of how you can talk to your supplier and understand where you are at in the process. So we're also coming up with a tentative retail price. So that way you make a margin. And then it's even writing up a cover letter that you could email to the client with an invoice to potentially take this $750 deposit that I requested. And hopefully we can close them on a $7,000 custom. So what this is going to do is just save you a ton of time. You have to make edits. You can fly this into a Google Doc and work with it and edit it a bit. But this is going to save you hours if you do this. And that's giving you all of the production steps and the basic understanding of what would need to happen. Now it's a question of who is going to do this if you don't have a facility. So let's ask JA to help me find a supplier. Search the web for B2B suppliers in New York, Hong Kong, and Surat. Now we are getting potential suppliers. So that way, if you're new to this big currency in this industry and something that has always been very important and there's something that people gatekeep in the industry and hoard is their contacts and make it feel like you can't get access to people that can make your jewelry or you can't get access to the best suppliers, this is disrupting something that needs to be disrupted in that regard because everybody should have a fair chance to build the business that they want to build. So we're giving you options to be able to find people in New York, in Hong Kong, and in Surat. And what you would be able to do is click the links on any one of these suppliers. This is all coming through SEO. That means that they're going to be on top of their business enough to even have SEO, meaning that they're probably pretty efficient. So that's a good thing. That's just one more qualifier kind of built in. So at this point, you would have endless options. You'd be able to figure out who exactly you want to make your jewelry and basically reverse engineer the process that you're going to need to have if you're brand new to this game. So we can find the suppliers, no problem. They're going to be reputable. They're going to be organized businesses because they're on top of their SEO. We have our cover letter already started for the client to take their deposit. We have a basic idea of what the budget could be for the project, what the production steps are going to be. And of course, we would have had endless options for even designing the piece in the first place. Of course, this is the one that we went with, but you could make whatever you want. So your question is probably, how do I get this sheet? This has some magic sauce that's going to help you with your business. This is free. So when you use ChatGPT Plus in order to create images, that does cost $20 a month. That doesn't come to us. That's just to get you access to being able to use that technology. There is no such thing as a free lunch, folks. It's an amazing technology. It's like nuclear power or something. It's very much worth it. If you go to jewelersadvantage.com, you can click the red button for get the free AI Copilot. You'll just fill out a form here. And what we will do is we will send you this sheet that gives you the link to Jewelers Advantage as well as three other AIs and the secret sauce in here that's going to help you start building your business developing a brand, even getting better as a founder, your company, and everything that you could want to know about product creation, branding, marketing, sales and service, and so on. So this has been an episode of AI for Jewelers. My name is Jesse here at Jewelers Advantage. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you in the next one.